Today I'm taking you guys through the best settings for the finals closed beta test on PC, where we're going to be achieving the highest FPS possible whilst maintaining maximum visibility of our enemies. To start off, you need to head to your video settings and then change your window mode to full screen rather than the default windowed full screen. The reason we do this is that typically in games, having your game set to an exclusive full screen or just full screen as it says here, ensures that the game gets access to all of the resources it needs while it's running instead of your PC potentially reserved Reserving some resource for things that are running in the background, then make sure your resolution is set to the correct resolution, i.e. your native resolution. For me, that's 1440p. For you guys, it might be 1080p. So just ensure you've got the right number set here. You definitely want to make sure your VSync is disabled. Yes, it does help out with screen tearing if that's a problem that you have, but especially in a competitive game like the finals, the input latency that it adds to your movement and to your mouse, to your aim, is really, really not worth it. So keep this disabled. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is a setting we see in a ton of modern games, and I still see a ton of people set it wrong. A lot of people, they'll go in here and they will set this to On Plus Boost because it just sounds the best and they think it's going to give them the best performance. That's not always the case. If we actually read here, the beat we want to look at is in boost mode, NVIDIA Reflex will attempt to optimize latency in CPU bound cases. So if you are in a system where your CPU is potentially your bottleneck, so your GPU is really, really strong and your CPU is maybe slightly older, then yeah, on plus boost is likely going to give you the best results. However, if you're on a system like mine, where my CPU and my GPU are both probably relatively the same age, both relatively the same power and neither really holds each other back, then on is actually the best option. If everything I've just said doesn't make too much sense and you don't really know, just try both on and on plus boost out, do a couple of benchmarks, check your FPS and see what works better for you. Then we've got the resolution scaling method, which is the upscaling technique that the game is using to render the image on your monitor. If you guys don't know what this upscaling does, it is actually rendering the game at a lower resolution than your monitor's resolution, which will give you a nice boost in FPS. But then to maintain visual fidelity and sharpness, it upscales it back to your monitor resolution without losing that FPS. It's very, very smart. I would recommend in this game that you run AMD FSR2 and I know a lot of people will just stick with DLSS if they're on an Nvidia card and think that that's the best option. It's not. FSR2 at quality will give you much less ghosting and motion blur in comparison to DLSS and there's a hell of a lot of motion in this game. The finals is a very very quick game where you are constantly moving and that slight ghosting that DLSS has always had a problem with, you really, really notice it in this game. So AMD FSR2 quality is going to be your best bet. Next up, we've got two very simple ones. Field of view makes you've maxed this all the way out to 110. This is a game where you need as much peripheral vision as possible so that we're ensuring we're gaining as much info as possible on where enemies are. And yeah, you don't want this FOV turned down. Get that all the way up. Then motion blur. Some people might like the look of motion blur. It might look cool. It might look cinematic, but overall it just reduces your visibility, especially in a game where you're moving around so much. You don't want a blurry screen, so turn this to disabled. Next, we move on to RTX Global Illumination, also known as ray tracing, which is an absolute FPS hog in every single game that it touches. In this game, very interestingly, you cannot actually turn it off. The lowest we can put it is to static. That is currently what I'd recommend when you put this on. It actually still maintains a really nice ray traced look where you get really nice uh, reflections on the ground. I can actually show you in this, uh, this practice area. You can see these reflections off the ground that actually look very, very nice. And because we can't turn it off, that's the lowest we can go. And we do gain a nice FPS from doing so. Now we move on to the quality settings. The overall quality level, it doesn't matter. It's going to get set to custom when we start messing with these things anyway. Then view distance. View distance was an interesting setting because I played around with this inside of this practice arena. And to actually gauge where we wanted to set this to, I came over to this rock and I looked down at these targets. You can see uh, at the moment, those targets seem to render in very, very nicely, even when I come right up to the back of this room. However, if I turn this all the way down to short, which is what I tried. I thought, nah, it probably doesn't matter. Or low, sorry, not short. And I click apply. Now suddenly, those have disappeared. Now, I haven't exactly been able to check if this affects enemies, enemy players inside of the game, but I'd assume that these dummies inside of the training area act similar to players. So you can see as I move up, it means I have to come all the way to this ramp to get them to spawn in. 
What I found is that the best setting here for a good balance of performance and general view distance is either medium or high. And your mileage may vary. You've got to try both of these out on your system and see if moving to high affects your FPS too much to the point we've got to come back to medium. Next on the list, we've got anti-aliasing. In this game, I'd recommend that you put the anti-aliasing quality to high. It looks just as good as the epic setting, but it does conserve a nice kind of three to five FPS inside of the game. I just found that coming all the way down to low really had no effect on FPS turning it below high. So I'd rather keep this high, keep all of the edges of objects looking as smooth and as well rendered as possible, limit all of those jagged edges as much as possible and get the game looking very clean. Next up we've got shadows which are infamous for being an FPS hog in pretty much every single game. So to test this I came over to this tree which has this dark shadow on the floor and I wanted to see at what setting do the shadows become really horrid and I had a good guess about where this would happen. I came down to medium, applied and looked at the shadow and it looks exactly the same. I've actually gained a small bit of FPS, but the shadow looks the same as it did at Epic. So then what I did is came back in, I turned it down to low and I applied it. And you'll notice now we're getting this pixelated, popping in and out shadow effect that looks really, really horrible. There's a lot of times in this game where you're going to have shadows being cast from uh, blowing a hole in a roof and then the sun shining through the roof into the building. Having shadows looking like this is just horrific. So what I'd recommend is you go with that setting of medium where the shadows look pretty much the same as epic, but you gain some nice FPS. If you are finding these settings useful, then why not consider subscribing down below? It only takes a second and it means a hell of a lot to me to have you guys along for the ride on my YouTube journey. It's just down there. Go give it a click. Next, we've got post processing, which I'm going to recommend you put all the way to low. It does make the game look a bit less kind of poppy and cool, and it does make the image a little bit more flat, but it does give a decent boost in performance and it actually makes the game look a lot cleaner overall because you've removed a lot of those extra effects the game's trying to put in your face to make it look, as I said, cool. It just overall helps the visibility out. So I think it's a no-brainer. For textures in most other games, I usually recommend that you keep them pretty high, mainly because it's pretty much dependent on how much VRAM have you got in your system. If you've got kind of eight gigs VRAM or more, you can just set the textures to pretty high. You're not going to see much, if any, performance hit and your game's just going to look a load cleaner, a load better. But in this game, I really don't see any difference between the epic and the low textures. That's how weird it is. You see, I've got them on epic now. I move around. I look at kind of, you know, leaves on this wall. I look at the floor and the stone effect. I look at this wall. Everything looks very, very good, of course. And then I change it down to low over here. We apply this, make sure it's applied. And I look around and nothing looks any different. It all looks just as clean and there isn't really much of a performance benefit either. I think for the safety of this at the moment, just put these on low and maybe you'll see a performance benefit at some point. It seems like it's not doing much though. Next one's a really big one, effects. You need to put these on low in this game. The reason being there are going to be a ton of explosions and fire going off in this game. You see these barrels over here when I blow these up and it's pretty, it's pretty aggressive. You notice that the fire, it doesn't look too good. I, I admit that, but you save a ton of performance by turning the effects all the way down to low. And really in the craziness of the game, you're not going to be caring too much about how the fire looks. You're going to be caring about that fire limiting your FPS by a ton. So low effects are unfortunately a must at the moment. For the foliage, it was kind of similar to the textures. I really couldn't see much difference turning this down from epic all the way to low. Even when you've got this at epic, you still get some kind of, you can see some pop in here of this branch of this tree. And overall, the foliage looks okay. When you come in here and you turn the foliage all the way down to low, it all sort of looks the same. I think I actually gained a couple of FPS by doing this, but really maybe the leaves look a little bit more blurry, a little bit less defined. Don't think it really matters. Just turn your foliage down to low. Next on the list, we have shading, and I'm sorry to keep going on about the same kind of stuff, but this also doesn't seem like it does much in the game. I changed this from epic down to low. I see little to no effect in performance. I'm talking maybe you gain one or two FPS, but the visuals of the game, 
they don't look any different really so once again i'd recommend you put it on low take your free one to two fps and uh just say you're happy with it last on the quality list we have the global illumination resolution which all links to our ray tracing we set up here now it's going to be pretty obvious what we're going to set this to as i said ray tracing and reflections are pretty big fps hog in the game with these set to static they still do look pretty nice and also if you put these all the way to low and we apply this and you have a look at the reflections off the floor they still look pretty nice you know we're still getting a decent effect of the reflections on the floor and it's not something that we need to really care too much about just leave it at low and last thing in the settings we have the graphics api which is by default set to DirectX 12 and for most people as it says here it's recommended that you just leave it to DirectX 12. it will make your game feel overall more responsive you'll probably get less stuttering than DirectX 11. the only reason you should be changing to 11 is if you are having some serious problems running DirectX 12 maybe because you've got a significantly old the system that might be causing problems but for really most of you guys out there DirectX 12 is the best bet that you need to stick with. If you want some awesome Nvidia control panel settings to pair with these in-game settings go watch this video here I've got a full breakdown of all of the best settings you need to be running right now inside of the control panel.